This is Gordy Kirkbank-Ellis, and this is Gordy's brain. But more on that in a moment. Gordy's 54 now, but when he was younger, he competed in rugby, karate and boxing. I had two really hard fights. I was doing what's known as a chicken dance. So you get up and your legs go all... They don't work properly. I have no memory of that week. The chicken dance Gordy's talking about is something that can happen when you get a hit to the head in a contact sport, like boxing or rugby, which Gordy played for decades. Repeated whacks to the head over many years, even hits without any symptoms, can add up, like for Gordy. This is his brain. And this is a typical human brain. The valleys of the brain are tightly packed. Gordy's are wide and filled with fluid. He has white lesion scarring from injury. His brain is shrinking from damage. One day I was with a friend of mine. He said, we discussed this yesterday or the day before. We did. He's like, we did. He's like, look, I want you to go and have some tests done. These kind of symptoms like short-term memory loss, along with a lot of testing and brain scans like this, are all pieces of a puzzle being put together to try and figure out what's going on for people like Gordy. His neurologist, Dr. Rowena Mobbs, suspects he has a brain disease that's associated with repeated hits to the head. CTE stands for Chronic Traumatic Encephalopathy, this very long name, which is a type of dementia. A link between repeated hits to the head and dementia has actually been known about since the 1920s. Then it was called Dementia Pugilistica, and it was showing up in boxers who'd had years of head knocks. CTE has made headlines around the world as more research comes out. So what do we know about it? Remember those valleys and folds of the brain? Well, the head bumps associated with CTE are thought to cause a protein in the brain called tau to malfunction, leading to an abnormal buildup of the protein in these valleys. Eventually that spreads to wider areas in those valleys, eventually the whole cortex or these whole folds of the brain. Eventually it may spread down to the areas for memory which are here in this temporal lobe. Robert Stern is a professor of neurology at Boston University. He says concussions are part of CTE, but the more common repetitive hits to the head without any symptoms are what add up. That turns on a switch, it seems, that can eventually lead to sometimes after years or decades, the spread of this underlying pathology in the brain. Research has shown that these repeated hits can be dangerous as they accumulate over time. The total force and the amount of hits you get matters. It's why some players might not get CTE, but players who've had more and harder hits to the head over years are more likely to develop the disease. It's not clear exactly who will get CTE and who won't. Right now, CTE can only be fully diagnosed after death by autopsy. The scientific criteria to try and diagnose CTE symptoms is right now only meant for research. But Rowena Mobbs uses it, along with her expert opinion and lots of other tests over years, to diagnose patients like Gordy with probable CTE. And this has some experts concerned. CTE is getting so much publicity hype that a lot of people become unnecessarily scared and hopeless. People self-diagnose, and therefore they say, it doesn't do any good for me to go to the doctor. It's much better to, to allow that person who, who's come to you for care, that opportunity of care of the symptoms, and a, a general understanding of what's going on. Gordy is now on medication that he says has made a big difference to his life. Way more switched on than I've been for a while. Mood changing too. I kind of feel a lot better about myself. Would you let your son play contact sports? Uh, moving forward, there is no way I would let my son compete in heavy contact sports. No. Not knowing what I now know. <laughs>